safety and security of our students. That's the one thing that got me, um, that kept me up at night. And it kept me up because it was something that I felt like I could not control. And so I decided to, when I heard about this guardian school security systems, it was a no brainer for me. For me, it was like, what can I learn and what can I do uh, to help spread the news about this advanced technology that has given us a, a greater opportunity to keep our schools safe? And so I decided to join this group of folks that are passionate about school safety. And uh, I'm here today uh, to share that with you as a, as a colleague and as someone who cares about the children across Minnesota. We also have, a, I want to introduce you to David Law, who also needs no introduction, but David is not able to join us today. Uh, yet, I want, the reason David is on this presentation is because David also has seen the power of Guardian and has also installed it at his school. He's a, he's a champion for school safety and for students' needs and for the safety of his school community. And I will share some comments from David later in the presentation, but I want you to know that David is as much a part of this presentation, but he's not able to be here with us. And I'm going to introduce, I have my colleague, Alan Roth, introduce himself to you. Alan? Yeah, and good morning to all of you. I'm Alan Roth, Chief Financial Officer of Guardian School Security Systems, and it certainly is a pleasure to be participating in this webinar this morning. And as part of my presentation, I'm very excited to introduce to you a new early threat detection surveillance security system. And uh, we'll be introducing to you the capabilities of that um, as we go through the presentation. Back to you, Bernadia. Thank you. Um, so there's one other member of this team that could not be here with us today, and that's Dr. Timothy Childs. He is the person who created this system. Dr. Childs has a PhD in physics and electrical engineer from Stanford University. And he's also has been a subject matter expert on government contracts dealing with this, this type of technology and it's missile defense and, and systems that help with threat detections. And Alan will talk more about that in another, uh, as he talks about it. But I want to talk to you about the founder of this, uh, of this, um, of uh, TLC Precision Water Technology, which is also something that he does. Dr. Childs is a servant leader. He's embedded in the community of North Minneapolis. He uh, hires and develops diverse employees. But I think uh, what, what excites me about him is that he, when he tells the story of how he was led to developing Guardian, his daughter was on a college campus and there was some gun violence or a threat of gun violence. And she was just so upset about that, that she reached out to him as daughters do to the daddies and say, dad, what can you do to help this not happen and have this experience, uh, this happens for other, other folks. And he took that seriously and thought, what can I do using the technology and things that I know to make sure that school communities are safe, college campuses, university campuses, but also K-12. And so he developed this technology that Alan will get more into later. He's recognized nationally. He's been, he's been recognized by three presidents, not for his technology, but more so for the work that he's done to, I know he was tutoring in Minneapolis public schools, uh, ran a tutoring program in Minnetonka. And he also created a foundation where he took college students, high school students and helped them go to college. So uh, he's someone that I have a lot of respect for and the work that he does. And um, I know that eventually you'll get a chance to meet him and he hates that he couldn't be here with us, but I wanted you to meet the guy behind this amazing research. Alan? Oh, this is me still. So um, because we're gonna do some group work and work um, in large group, we're gonna try to engage you a little bit in this discussion. I created some group non non norms and assumptions that I hope you will agree to. And I think they're pretty standard. And I think mainly we're here because you want to learn. And I know this about people, superintendents and leaders, you want to learn what's going on that you can help understand uh, for your own context and learning environment. It's a safe space. We want it to be safe. I can say that 
but it's up to you and all of us to make sure that happens and that you feel supported if you're sharing something. I ask that if, if someone shares something and it's really pithy and you think it's really important and you want to share it again, I ask that you go to that person, not today, but outside the meeting and say, I really was impressed with what you said, or it was thought provoking for me. Can uh, Do I have your permission to share? And I think if you ask that, that will be great. And we, but we share because we want others to learn. Uh, we want others to learn. I know in uh, if you're a superintendent, sometimes you, you're you the only person in your position, but you're in this environment and you're a member of MASA because you want to be engaged and learn. And we appreciate that. The uh, questions, questions will come up. Jot down your questions, put them in the chat, and we'll try to respond to questions at the end of the session. And if we don't get to them, we'll capture the chat respond to the questions and we'll push them out to you. So your questions will get answered. If we run out of time, and can't do them all in this session. And so I want you to know that um, we're gonna ask that we that you agree to these assumptions. And then we'll move on to uh, our topic funding. This is the one that I know as superintendent is not understood by a lot of our stakeholders. You know, uh, what's the funding for? We have categorical funding. We have funding that we can't use for certain things. And this is where I want us to have some group talk. And I remember the uh, Urban League president came to Minneapolis Public Schools. I wasn't even in the system at the time. And he came to the podium. He said, show me the money. Way before Jerry Maguire said it, where is the money being spent? So let's, let's uh, open up our uh, mics. Let's take a moment to talk about where is money currently being spent for school safety in your school? If you could just kind of uh, help and engage in that conversation, I will tell you, I know, I remember one year when the legislature gave like five more dollars per pupil. And I thought, well, that's not a lot. But so uh, I know the funds are limited, but how are you currently spending your money for school safety? And what is your, what is your school currently doing to keep students, faculty, and teachers safe? So um, let's let's have a brief conversation about that, if we could, if you're willing to share, if you're in the room. Um, Paul, can I ask you to help us with that? Start off, please. You bet. Yeah, two things come to mind. Um, as far as infrastructure items go, I think that uh, in my district, it's pretty standard with uh, uh, secure entrances and cameras, et, et cetera. Um, I think also a, a measure of safety is that we've transitioned to a new emergency crisis planning um, system here. And uh, so communicating that out to the stakeholders about what the language means, how, uh, how people in the system should operate and what parents can expect from us in terms of communication. So those are just two areas that come to mind as far as how we're using health and safety dollars to support um, safety efforts in Mankato. Thank you, Paul. Anyone else want to add anything? I'll jump in, Bernadita. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Sonic. I'm the assistant superintendent um, for Roseville Area Schools. And we have um, kind of um, two equal or like a two-pronged approach to how we approach safety. So one is like your traditional safety and security. And that's kind of the, the things that you would typically think about, like school resource officers, um, secure entrances, standard response protocols, right? But then we also have this equally important track that's really around like violence prevention. And that is based on the work of the Violence Project, which is a local nonprofit mm. organization that is really committed to preventing violence through actionable research. And the whole last chapter of their book is called Hope. And what they talk about is what research shows actually prevents violence. Uh, and so some of the things that they talk about are like social emotional learning, our anonymous reporting, um, screening for risk and trauma, the same way that we risk our screen for like vision and hearing, right? So we've kind of taken a, a um, two-pronged approach to how we approach safety. Great. Thank you, Melissa. Nice to meet you. Um, anyone else before we move on? Just uh, think about this for yourself. Even if you're not responding, think about what your responsibility is. Who is 622 uses funding for SROs, staffing, welcoming desks, technology support, safety, and security? Thank you for putting that in the chat, Ty. Absolutely. Sorry that I went off camera. I also have, um, I'm not, my angle is a little bit off here, but two um, of our high school principals here just listening in. Um, Great. Thank you. 
And I apologize, I don't think I've introduced myself. I'm Ty Thompson, the Assistant Superintendent for District 622, um, North St. Paul, Maplewood, Oakdale. And then we have Principal uh, Kevin Wolf from North High School and Bethany Descent from Tartan High School. Welcome. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Ty, for, for bringing in your, your group with you this morning. Absolutely. So that's kids from Tar Tartan High School. Great. Excellent. Yeah. Um, well, good to hear it. So I was just adding in the chat just so I was trying to engage at the table. So my apologies for being off camera, but we are um, doing some of the things that we've heard from others. Great, great. Um, yes, uh, I think they're probably, I would say those are the things that I was doing when I was a superintendent that's in Minneapolis as well. Thank you. Next slide, please. So thank you, Paul and Melissa and Ty for sharing what you did. Um, Bernadia asked where the money is being spent. And this slide here does a good job of really providing a comprehensive list of where annually $6 billion is being spent now on school security applications and safety practices. And I'm not going to read through that list, but if you scan through that list, you'll see some of the areas that you guys referenced. And what you'll find is that the vast majority of these security applications are residing inside the school or at the school entrance. And despite spending $6 billion a year, we continue to have a crisis in our country as it relates to school shooting incidents. And sadly, those school shooting incidents continue to rise at unprecedented levels and the associated injuries and deaths that come with it. And really begging the question of, are we spending enough? And are we most effectively spending the money that we do on school security and safety? Next slide. So Guardian School Security Systems was established as a separate legal entity a couple years ago to commercialize and repurpose technology that Dr. Childs and his team have been using for early threat detection and missile defense systems for the US military and NASA for over 25 years. And the advantages of that is we have really put together a world-class team, technical team, that is really looked to to be the thought leaders when it comes to advanced millimeter wave applications. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means in subsequent slides, as well as it's allowed us to really amass a very strong network of procurement and supply chain partners that we can call upon for the critical components that make up our system. Next slide, please. We are going to show you here a short video that provides an overview of our system. It's about two, a little over two minutes. And I'll note that if you are sensitive to violence um, or gun noise, you may wanna mute your screen here for the next two minutes, but uh, Let's go ahead and show that, and then we'll come back and talk more about the actual capabilities of our system. They're precious and vulnerable. We love them, teach them, and it's our responsibility to protect them. Unfortunately, our schools are easy targets for those who would do them harm. No amount of security personnel or armed teachers will prevent another Uvalde, Columbine, Sandy Hook, or Parkland. But Guardian can. This proprietary patented millimeter wave technology invented by Dr. Childs originally for the U.S. military can detect guns and knives, even the type of weapon, before they enter a school. Our unique radar and visual surveillance system creates a perimeter around a school that identifies a threat before it reaches the school. It detects the presence of a weapon, immediately alerts school officials and first responders, and can even lock the doors. Our non-invasive active system has been used by the military for many years. 
This millimeter wave technology is safe for students and the school personnel alike, and our recent field tests were a complete success. In July, the Guardian team set up a prototype system outside an elementary school in Minnesota. With school officials and law enforcement as observers, our system successfully identified several different kinds of weapons, even hidden weapons, before they entered the building. As an educator for over 50 years, the need is obvious. The potential to protect our schools proven. The technology works. We are ready and able to work with you and to tailor our system to secure our schools and protect our children. It is finally a real solution for the security of our children. Precious and vulnerable. Our children need a safe and secure environment to grow and prosper. The Guardian Security System is the answer. Guardian, making our schools, our children, and our future safer. Thank you. Bernadia, are we gonna go to breakout sessions first? I, I've lost the track of the PowerPoint. He, he, um, yes, I think so. So um, that was our grounding. So now we're gonna go into breakout rooms. Thank you, Alan. And uh, we're gonna do some pair share. Um, I'm gonna ask that you introduce yourself briefly and quickly in the breakout rooms. And then I have three questions that I want you to, to discuss. And the question is, what keeps you up at night about school safety? What keeps you up? I share what keeps me up. Have you experienced any weapons or gun violence in your schools, you recently or ever? And how do you respond when your environment is unsafe or threatened? Just a quick conversation. You're going to have seven minutes, not a lot of time, Three of you will be in. Three of you will be in the breakout room. I'm going to ask the person with their birthday closest to today that you you help keep the keep the group moving, and then the person whose birthday is farther away from today that you be the person that if I need someone to report out that you report out in the next after we come out of the breakout rooms, and note your breakout room number. I'll just call a number breakout room one, and then that's kind of a clip through uh, some responses. And if I call another breakout room and you, they're sharing the same thing, you could just say, we agree, and we'll keep it at that. But these are the three questions I want you to spend seven minutes. I know it's not a lot of time, but that's why it's only three to a group. So we'll move to breakout rooms for seven minutes, and then we'll come back. Thank you for spending time and engaging your breakout groups around those three questions. Is there anyone who was willing to share out what you discuss in, while in your breakout groups. Just just start talking. That'll be great. What keeps you up at night? I'll jump in and share just to move the conversation along. I think what was interesting um, for Paul, Christy, and I is just um, similar experiences. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I shared in our breakout room is we've had three loaded guns at our high school this fall. Um, and so just the... Um, all that comes with it and the aftershock and the waves. Um, and Paul really, you know, shared the same experience around um, when something happens, when there's crisis, when there's a weapon, um, that it's not, it's that incident is often over soon, but the ripple effect and loss of trust and work with the community like is, you know, weeks and months to come. Thank you, Melissa. Yes. Thank you for that. Anyone else wanted, would like to share? Melissa, you were in group one, right? Sure, maybe. Okay. <laughs> For group three. Thanks, Christy. Okay, group three. Anybody from group one or two have anything to add to that? Um, I don't recall what group we were in either, so my apologies. Um, but no problem. <laughs> group two, it sounds like. Um, also was with someone uh, representing the Roseville School District, and so um, we we had similar experiences. Uh, to Melissa Sonic's point. And I, one thing though that we did discuss and I just bring into the space um, was my shameless plug to uh, Mr. Hammond, who uh, is uh, representing or here on behalf of Representative Betty McCollum. And just really the importance of the safe school dollars are really helpful and very supportive for us. And in addition, it's really not enough money. And right. so, 
with, I'm not sure the cost of this technology. I'm really interested in learning more. And so I'm looking forward to that. But I think a concern is how might we be able to um, have additional dollars through safe schools or in other ways to appropriately fund school safety so that we can use the technology to be able to keep these things out of the school before they enter and just the ripple effect um, to, to use that language of how that can positively impact student learning because we would not have to put so much focus on all the staffing we need to spread out into all these different areas. Um, and not to say that we wouldn't have staff, but we could be focusing less on what's happening in this hallway during this time and making those meaningful connections. And um, we, you know, there, there's a lot of funding that goes into all these different technologies that are inside of the building. And if we could just put that outside of the building and let that go, we could really focus on education and our students. So I just think that piece is really critical. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Ty, for that. Uh, so the last group, is there anything, I want to give you the opportunity as well, if there's something that hasn't been said that you would like to share and put in the space. I can share from our from that last group. Um, we have not had the experience um, collectively of having loaded weapons in our school systems, um, thankfully. Uh, we talked about some of the other weapons that King kids have um, brought with them and um, how staff respond to that and um, how we work to prevent it. So that was our conversation. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. And I want to say when uh, Melissa talked about the 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 impact of the, the ripple effect and what happens is that when after Sandy Hook took place, after the shooting at Sandy Hook, I mean, the mics were up in my face in the community and everybody was like, what are you doing, superintendent? But then I had an adult in one of my schools bring a gun to school because she wanted to keep students safe and keep the school community safe. So she brought a gun into the school and put it in her locker. And then she shared it with people that she had brought the gun. Now, of course, as a superintendent, I was like, oh, how, how must it feel if you're so afraid of your environment? Are you afraid that we, the system, are not protecting kids that you feel like you have to bring a gun to school? And those stickers outside the school, like no guns here, didn't matter. And of course, you know, we had to take some corrective action with that, but it really bothered me. And it made me realize that Everybody's concerned about safety. The adults, all the adults and everyone's concerned. And here we have someone that's doing this on her own. And it made me think about, we don't want, I don't want, I don't want to be arming teachers and custodian and people to, to protect our children. And there are other options and ways that are safer and more impactful than that. Again, thank you for sharing. Um, I share, I was telling the group, I share um, similarly, the things that you've said. So, um, Alan. Yeah, thank you. Um, all very good comments and uh, really kind of tease up uh, the next part of our presentation, whereby our mission at Guardian is safeguarding America's children using intelligent threat detection. And as I sit here and listen to some of these, you know, comments I think to another presentation that I was at where one of the teachers said, we don't want to be Jason Bourne. We want to be able to teach and educate. And there's a lot that goes into safeguarding our children these days. I've got six kids myself and eight grandchildren. And my four-year-old grandchild told me the other day that, hey, Papa, uh, I was at school, and this is nursery school the other day. And we had a monster come through the hallway. And when we see that monster, we have been taught to hide underneath our desk. And it turns out the monster was the, the principal of the nursery school. Oh. And we've gotten to that point now where four-year-olds at nursery schools have to do these sorts of drills. And he must have told me three times that weekend, Papa, I don't want to go back to school. And so... It's all of our responsibilities as parents, grandparents, educators, leaders in our schools, leaders in our government to really figure out how to crack this nut. And uh, 
we are doing this using intelligent threat detection, meaning that we have a system that relies on artificial intelligence and using millimeter wave radar, which is really a special class of radar that operates at a very low power. And as I referred to earlier on, it's been proven and used by our military in much more challenging environments than the school environment. And I always like to start with the, the safety slide because it is a form of radar. When people hear that, they think of, well, the radiation. But millimeter wave is universally considered what they call non-ionizing as opposed to ionizing. So x-rays that you think of where you go in for a broken bone, x-rays that are used to eradicate and kill cancer cells all fall on that right side of the spectrum. And you can see the GSSS, Guardian School Security Systems, the amount of power that we're using to generate our, call it, signal that goes out into the school um, campus outside of the school really falls somewhere between your cell phone and your TV remote. So very safe to use. And you can go on to the next slide, please. So on our next slide, I'm gonna actually dive into the actual capabilities of our system, which you kind of see here in these arrows pointing towards the school. But the visual here is really to kind of focus on the fact that we believe to properly safeguard our schools, that we need to really complement and enhance that earlier list that we saw that is primarily applications that are inside the school or at the school entrance with a solution that is designed to keep the intruder out of the school, keep the weapons out of the school, and do that in such a way that provides a early notification of where this intruder may be. And so our system is really designed to detect a weapon, whether it's concealed or not, up to 400 feet away from the entrance of a school using our millimeter wave radar. And we talk about this being a comprehensive solution because it not only can detect the presence of a weapon, it can then go on to, and you saw in the video, this dual unit where on one side we have the radar and the other side we have a smart camera. So once the weapon has been identified, we can then, or detected, we can then take over with our smart camera and through facial recognition, identify who the intruder is. We can alert the school authorities and law enforcement, and then we can also synchronize with existing school applications. And that's why earlier on, I indicated that our solution really is there to complement and enhance the current security systems and applications that reside in the schools. Next slide, please. So in the video, you saw what is pictured here to be a typical high school. And in the upper right-hand corner, you also saw this dual cavity unit where we have our artificial intelligence camera on the left side and our radar on the right. And for a typical high school like this, we would install 10 of these units Five of them would be imaging out towards the perimeter and likely installed on the roof line, as well as the entrance to the school. And the other five would be installed on poles in the parking lot or poles that we put up imaging back towards the school. And each of those concentric circles that you see are configured to the actual perimeter that we are imaging in. So if you look at the upper right corner, you see a sports stadium there. And that may be a distance that goes out 
400 feet from the corner of that building, where on the left side of the school, there may be a row of homes that is 100 feet away. And so we can figure each zone to the distance of the perimeter of the school for privacy reasons, because we don't want to be imaging inside people's homes. And the other reason for having multiple concentric zones is for redundancy purposes. If there were multiple intruders, which has occurred um, as a company, we've really studied the school shooting incidents for the last 20 years. It's rare, but it has happened. So what happens is once our radar and essentially the way the millimeter wave radar works is it it sends a signal out into these zones and believe it or not we are sending a million images a second into each of these zones so at a typical high school where we have 10 of these in the amount of time that i've been speaking here talking about this we would have sent out 300 million images into these zones and those <clears throat> images are a signal that is bouncing off of the object that is in these zones okay and there's lots of objects in these zones could be cars could be people and every object based on its composition and its material makeup responds differently and sends a different and unique signal back to the receptor antennas for the millimeter wave radar and so every every object has its own unique what they call signature or you can think of it as a fingerprint and all of those images are being simultaneously bounced off of our threat database so when a threat is detected whether it's a knife pistol rifle then the radar says, hey, camera, wake up. And the camera starts tracking the intruder and live streams the footage of the intruder to authorities, whether it's school authorities. If there's a security officer there, it can be streamed to their phones. And within two seconds through 911 inform, we notify local police. And our system is capable because millimeter wave systems are capable of doing this. We also track the pace in which the intruder is moving towards the school. So all of that happens simultaneously. Um, artificial, artificial intelligence servers are behind the scenes, They're really handling all of this, these images. And uh, the intruder does not know that they've been scanned so the other thing that we're capable of is actually synchronizing with existing security applications whether that be locking of doors sounding sirens flashing strobes whatever existing security applications that a school has we can synchronize with those and um, further enhance keeping the intruder out of the school so that really provides an overview of the weapon detection. In addition to that, um, our entry cam, we have proven that we are capable because of this millimeter wave radar capability of detecting the, the composition of any sort of contraband. So you see here listed fentanyl, cannabis, cocaine, vape liquid. Not that we would uh, notify 911 and form, but we would put the student body on notice that any sort of contraband, uh, vape liquid, alcohol being brought into the schools will be detected and school authorities will be notified. And that is something that we will be releasing um, with our system in the late later part of 2024. Um, we're going to be coming to market with our system with the weapon detection first and have actually started to roll out our system to demonstration schools in the United States that school leadership, district leadership, 
can actually go and observe how our system works. But we're really excited about the weapon detection, but to be honest with you, we're getting a ton of interest on fentanyl. And fentanyl has become the number one cause of death now for adults in our country. That's trickling down into our youth. And while weapon detection is extremely important, fentanyl is actually causing more deaths for our adolescents and students. It's just something that is kind of a silent issue. So that, I believe, gives you the overview. And uh, I'll let uh, Bernadette you. take it from Thank here. You. Thank you, um, Alan. And uh, I want to make sure I'm, I'm not on mute. So as I said earlier, David Law could not join us today, and he, but he wanted me to read a statement uh, since he wasn't able to be here. And I don't want to really read to you, but I will, but you can follow along. Former Minnetonka Superintendent Dennis Peterson saw the potential for improved school safety through technology many years ago. He made the decision to offer Minnetonka Elementary School, Deep Haven, as a pilot site for product development. As I transitioned into the Minnetonka superintendency, I assumed the role of district partner without question since school safety is a priority for me as well. Over the past 16 months, I've watched the progression of Guardian Security product advance. The potential to identify persons with a weapon on school campus, track them with a camera while alerting law enforcement, promises to be a giant step forward for school safety. We look forward to seeing the final product in place in schools across the country, and I would add across Minnesota. And that's a statement for David. Um, so, you know, the question, I want to make sure that people are adding questions to the chat, uh, if you have any. But I want to talk about funding options, and I think it was Ty who started talking about this uh, initially. We know that... Um, Funding, school funding, again, is categorical, and the safety funds that you're receiving are probably not sufficient for all the things that you want to do. And yet, uh, there are ways of thinking about this. Uh, we know that we're talking to con congressional staff and, and leaders to ask about how can we support getting funds to schools, to your schools, to help uh, fund this um, technology. And I also spent some time over at the Department of Ed looking at ESSER funds. And I know this is kind of like a, a cliff that a lot of people are facing, but the ESSER funds can be utilized for school safety. And you can encumber the funds yet now in your budgeting process and then spend them later. So there are ways of thinking about using your ESSER three funds before they totally disappear for something that will be in the system. And then again, this is Bipartisan Safety Communities Act, where there's $1 billion been set aside. And we have people who are working on this effort. We have uh, Matthew McConaughey, who is a resident, a former resident of, uh, of uh, Uvalde, who was just like, felt like he really wanted to do something to help address this issue of gun violence in our schools, and especially in his own community, and created the Green Light Initiative. And this comes with, like I said, resources. And as a part of this uh, Greenlight Initiative, he is also providing grant writers to assist with purchasing uh, this technology. Now, I know I have general operating budgets, but I'm not naive. I know how shrinking they are and how tight they are, cross subsidies and everything that you have to do out of that budget. And it's, it doesn't stretch very far. But the other thing that I, I thought about was levies. You can levy, if you're doing any construction, uh, doing any adaptations to a building, uh, infrastructure, any facilities that are already there, you can bond for uh, resources to help with those upgrades or whatever you need to do. People upgrade for technology, um, do levies for technology all the time. So these are some of the ways I've thought about it. And I'm still thinking about it. So um, as we continue to think about what we can do to support you in getting this technology in your building, I'm there and I'm and I'm working on it and my team is working on it as well. Um, so that ends our presentation. We wanted to, first of all, at a high level, introduce you to this technology and to share with you why 
it's important for me to put my name by this and to get engaged in this is because this is an area where I feel like I, as a superintendent, felt like I didn't have the information that could help me understand how when a parent could ask me, what are you doing? And Melissa, thank you for naming those things because all those things are absolutely important. We must continue to work on our environments and making sure that our youth and students own the communities that they in and feel like they're safe and have, if you see something, share something, uh, let's work on those things, continue to work on those things that are internal, but we can't ignore that we have something that'll help us work on, on this issue outside of a school environment as well, before the threat enters the school. And uh, if you have any questions to answer, we'd like to take some time in answering those now, though I would tell you, we we talked about this and we you know thought about there are a lot of technical aspects to this that if you're really interested, not really, you are interested. If you're interested in seeing how this technology works in person, we have a demo site at Deep Haven. David Law is making it accessible during all kind of breaks. MEA, well, MEA is over vacations. He's making it available for people to come and see it at a school site. We also have a demo site at our headquarters in North Minneapolis off West River Road that I'm setting up times for you to come and see, bring whoever you want to, and the actual technicians and the Dr. Childs will be in those meetings where you can ask these really in-depth questions because we're intellectually curious, right? We want to know everything, and he can answer questions of that nature. But if there are any questions, I don't see, Ken, do we have questions in the chat that we can answer? Yes, <laughs> we have um, one. We have getting a cost estimate of what it can cost for a typical high school and I'll turn that over to Alan and maybe even add in kind of the difference of the elementary schools versus high schools. Yeah, so real quick, let me just start. It is driven by the number of dual cavity units, the radar camera units installed. These are hardwired. And so in an elementary school, we would put five of these and the typical cost, if you outright purchase these at an elementary school would be about $300,000. A middle school, 450, and a high school would be twice the amount of units as a um, elementary school. So you're looking at about $600,000 if they're outright purchased, which we feel that anyone that's doing new school construction would likely put that into a bond referendum. Private schools that have excess cash reserves would be candidates for outright purchasing. The other way we're going to come to market is through a subscription leasing model, whereby if you are a high school, that $600,000 really turns into something that would be more like $140,000 a year to lease the system for five years. And you can divide that in half for an elementary school. So like Bernadia said, there's quite a bit of money out there for ESSER. There's other programs that we are working at and have got lobbyists on our behalf in states that we are coming to market in. So not only is there federal money, there's state and local money too to put towards this. And it's a whole nother conversation that requires more time than today. But uh, that gives you a little bit of a sense for the, the cost of this. And what I'll say too is, if you think about the cost of one security officer, not that we're advocating that we eliminate that, but the cost of one security officer and certain schools now are moving towards multiple. That is about $100,000 a year fully loaded. So. Can I ask a follow-up question about that? Is there a, um, a place where we can go like a website that would um, share some of this information? Because you talked a little bit about purchasing versus leasing. So that's my first yeah. question. And then is leasing available currently or is that something you're working on for the future? Um, we are just in the process of setting that up with our our lending uh, organization. So we are right now trying to get our demonstration sites up and running here in the fourth quarter. And we'll be actually coming to market in the first quarter of 2024. We will be opening up a website soon that will have more information about all this. So sit tight and through Bernadia and through Massa, we will kind of keep you apprised. Um, but we are just on the verge of really rolling all of this out. Thank you. I think, uh, yeah. Melissa, one of the questions that came up, and I know you guys were looking for the, going to the website and it wasn't working. I know we're 
upgrading the website with all this information. So I'll shoot that out to you guys as well. And I know people want to see that. Uh, I know how important that is for you. Thank you. We have a follow-up question about a one-time cost. Is this a one-time cost? And then what about continued support for the system? Yeah, good question. So we will have a monitoring center um, that we monitor the installed base of all the radar camera units out there. And the monitoring fees will be $1,000 per radar camera unit. So if you're a high school with 10 of those, it would be $10,000 per year, elementary school, $5,000 per year. Um, so that would be the additional cost beyond the securing the equipment. What would your rates be for a K-12 school? Pardon? What would your rates be for a K-12 school for that support? Um, it really is tied to the number of radar camera units. So like at a high school, if there were 10 of those, it would be $10,000 $1, per radar camera unit. Okay. So, yeah, so if it's a large, you know, suburban high school that needs 15 of those, it would be 15000 a year. But um, for a typical high school, we're thinking 10 of these units, elementary school five, so $1,000 per radar camera unit on the annual monitoring fee. And the importance of that is as we upgrade our, our threat database and populate it with additional weapons, um, and as we roll out the feature for the contraband detection, all of that goes through our cloud platform out to the servers that reside at the school. So. Um, an additional question. T can you talk about the success rate when testing this technology at your pilot sites? Yes. Yeah, so we're in the process right now of installing those demos. So, um, and we really haven't completed that yet. So, um, but we do monitor at our, our location, at our headquarters, in our lab. So we've got a accuracy calculation that we use for detection and right now our goal is 95 percent or higher for accuracy of image recognition of a weapon and we're we're, we're accomplishing that um alan i thought as you were chatting maybe it would be helpful to share uh kind of what happens like so how do you go do the site assessment what happens like if you're interested in saying yes to this yeah. So right now we've pretty much set a goal to put five of these demonstration sites up. Um, we're going to be, you know, we've got the one that's going in Deep Haven. So we're going to be, you know, in Florida, Texas, California, Minnesota, and Wisconsin for demonstration sites. So we've pretty much already have determined where those are going to be. So beyond that, then we are starting to take orders for, as we roll into 2024 for actual schools who wanna move forward. So um, all of that will be coming to our kind of upgraded website here soon. Um, another question, clarification. For instance, if you want to lease it at a high school, it's the $140,000 a year? Correct. Um, so, or is yeah. that for five years? And then the thousand dollars per camera for the ongoing monitoring. Yeah. So clarification there is outright purchase it. It's going to be about six hundred thousand dollars instead of outright purchasing it up front. You think of it like a car. Um, you're going to be leasing it on a monthly basis. The annual lease on that is one hundred and forty thousand thereabouts. So that's over five years. Um, you would be paying one hundred forty thousand per year. Um, because essentially we're going to be financing that for you. And then on top of that is the the monitoring fee, which for high school would be $10,000 per year, elementary school, typically $5,000. I'm looking at our time here. And if you have any other questions, please um if you go back to that slide, there's my email, and then you could all text me. If you have a question or you have a question that you want to that you want to ask, please don't hesitate to ask. Again, I'm doing this because 
it really is important to me. I also have grandsons who come home and say, BB, we practice what to do when there's a monster. And I'm just like, gosh, he's seven and they're five. It's just too much. It's too much to ask our kids to do. But that ends our presentation. It's 9.02. I want to thank the supporting cast from MASA for their help putting this session on. Thank you. And I want to thank you all for coming out bright and early. I know you could be doing anything else with your time and you chose to be here because it's important. And we are recording this session. If you are interested in showing it to your board members or showing it to community members or whatever, we will certainly uh, shoot that out to you so you can share it. And thank you so much.